Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm Joe Patrao, an engineering manager at Bloomberg. I lead the development for, the, for Bloomberg's HR systems. I'm here to share um, my team's story on its inner source journey with you all. I'll give you a brief explanation of how inner source has evolved at Bloomberg over the last decade. Then I'll talk about the inner source project that I've been involved in and where we are now. I'll cover some changes that were needed to make the project more inner sourceable. I'll talk about how we use statistics within the governance model of our project. Finally, I'll share some lessons learned. Over the last few years, inner source has exploded across the engineering organization at Bloomberg. At the rapid adoption of GitHub and organization-wide collaboration initiatives like technology guilds, where engineers across the organization build relationships and share ideas, created conditions that were very ripe for inner source. Uh, we also started a special champs program to bridge the divide between engineers working on infrastructure and engineers working in applications that rely on that infrastructure. This has increased collaboration touch points, knowledge sharing, and influenced roadmaps across various groups. Now more than ever before, engineers are empowered to be the change they want to see in another team's code base whether it's contributing bug fixes or you know, a small little change that makes a client happy, um, or a feature that improves productivity across a group of engineers. Inner source is, extreme, is increasingly becoming a pillar of how we work at Bloomberg. While contributing bug fixes and features to infrastructure has become quite routine, the practice is not so common across application teams. That is application to application team in a source is not so common. So a few years ago, I found myself in a situation where the success of my team was intrinsically tied to the inner source ability of our project. So my team, let's call it, keep it generic, owns a generic application that's potentially useful to many other application teams. Not wanting to reinvent the team, the wheel, another team called Team Get Stuff Done with the backing of upper management, decided to invest their time and energy in leveraging our software. A no brainer, right? Reality, however, has a bias towards complexity. As a collaboration intensified, we frequently ran into the big cheese problem. Delays and disagreements on PRs started way below me and escalated frequently above me. Clearly our software and associated development and collaborative processes did not scale with intense engagement from other teams. And during my annual performance evaluation, I was told in uh, no uncertain terms that as the manager of Keep It Generic, this collaboration problem needed to be solved. There I was, a few months into a new role, not knowing where to begin, not knowing where to seek help. And at that time, I couldn't even imagine what solving this problem looked like. So what do you do in this day and age when you do not know how to solve a problem? Well, you Google. That's how I stumbled upon the InnoSource Commons website and associated literature, the checklist, the getting started ebook. Slowly, my team began to develop a lingua franca around InnoSource concepts, like trusted committer, passive documentation, contributing agreements. And, I, and we began to socialize these concepts with our stakeholders. So fast forward to today, and where does our project stand? We've come a long way. Even comparing ourselves relatively to inner source intensive projects within the company. So here's a traditional project, keep it generic. There's, then there's keep it generic, that's our inner source project, and then there's software infrastructure. As you can see, uh, based on statistics, looking at the statistics, that our team's done very well. We're like 70% of PRs are from within the team, but 16% are from team get stuff done and 14% from other teams. So I'm happy to report that the numbers really inference, inf reinforce that inner source is alive and well within my team. Uh, we did not get here overnight. So we needed to make changes in our leadership style. This was difficult. Uh, we needed a much more open and empathetic style. Once we achieved this, things started to follow like a snowball effect. We lacked a common mission and set of principles of software development across all the teams we were collaborating with for this particular project. So a more open and empathetic leadership style brought along readers from across the teams together. 
and we agreed on a solid mission statement and a set of values. We invested significantly in asynchronous communication that if it's not done, if it's not written down, it did not happen. Ethos from the open source world is very applicable in an inner source context and we followed it. We, were, we took pride in our quality of our documentation and keeping it updated was a first class priority. We standardized PR templates and mandata mandated checks on all PRs, regardless of which team was originating the PR. So over the past two years, the two teams have begun to more closely collaborate on quarterly planning and yearly business planning. And we also have open and honest discussions about priorities and expectations. Together, we decided to measure what made sense to measure. But before we invested significantly in attempting to improve the situation, we examined the trend and the impact of PRs originating from Team Get Stuff Done. And we asked ourselves, how valuable is it to solve this particular collaboration problem? The data gave us a clear answer. Team Get Stuff Done were regular contributors to us. They consistently contributed over time and their contributions mattered a great deal, both in terms of absolute number and in terms of contributions as a percentage of overall contributions. There was some understandable fluctuation based on business delivery cycle and priorities. The overall picture, however, was clear. There was significant value to be realized from improving the inner source process. We circulated this data across both teams and their management, and this provided much needed transparency into the strength and the value to both teams from this collaborative relationship. Then we focused in on our goal. With respect to statistics, there are so many different types of statistics that we could be that could be interesting to look at. So where do we start? So we adopted a goal question metric approach and defined and iterated on our goal. We started out with a clear goal to improve collaboration between teams, but we realized that this is kind of cliche and vague. So we needed more specificity. So after refining our goal a little bit, we asked ourselves some targeted questions. So we looked specifically at PRs, their review distribution, um, not just in terms of the reviewers, but also uh, in terms of comment distribution. We looked at the mean time to merge and we looked at how this varies across the two teams. Uh, when we explored whether we could provide an SLA for when, prod when PRs could get merged. So we had received anecdotal feedback bubbling up that the Get Stuff Done, the, from the Get Stuff Done team, that the review process for, for Keep It Generic was pretty centralized. There were bottlenecks. There were too few developers reviewing PRs. This anecdotal feedback was a trigger for us to examine the data ourselves. And not just in terms of number of reviewers, but also in terms of number of engineers who commented on PRs and provided feedback. So the pie chart on the left, it was self-evident that we had only a couple of reviewers reviewing greater than 90% of the PRs. And there were some engineers who didn't review or contribute to PRs from external teams. So within the team, we discussed ways to improve this and utilize a number of factors stressing to the team that a quality review was central to our team's success. We drafted many clear guidelines and expectations around code standards, added some more senior engineers to the team. So now there was a much better balance between senior and junior engineers. As you can see, we're in a much better place now with a much flatter distribution. Next, we looked at mean time to merge. Uh, team Get Stuff Done works out of two geographical locations, one in North America, one in Europe. We wanted to know if there were any quantifiable differences in the inner source process across those locations. So the chart here demonstrates that Get Stuff Done engineer had to wait an average twice as longer to merge a PR than their Keep It Generic counterpart. The standard deviation for it is also higher. These observations are not surprising or unreasonable. We do expect that you know, the owners of the code base that keep it generic uh, to have fewer barriers to PR into their own code base. Variability measured by standard deviation is a good indicator of the quality of a process. Uh, and the difference in the standard deviation between the two teams' PRs indicate that there is significant scope for improvement. 
Moreover, we observe a lower standard deviation PRs from the European Get Stuff Done team than the North American one. And we examine the differences in our collaboration across these two teams. The London team has much more focused and strategic engagement with Keep It Generic. Their projects are typically bigger. They tend to continue in phases over months. So there's much little context switching. With the North American team, there were many the small, medium-sized projects that continue to get executed. So the difference here is an analog an analogous to an economies of scale advantage that benefited the European Get Stuff Done team. And next, we enthusiastically explored whether we could build on the data we collected. We observed that a large percent of PRs were typically merged within 10 business days or less. So when you're in a train station and you're anxious to get on your train, when you see or hear an indicator that the next train will arrive in X minutes, you feel considerably at ease. We ideated about providing engineers PRing with some concrete expectations of when they could expect their PR to be merged with a reasonable probability to improve their contribution experience. Modeling this problem though, we found that only a small percent of the variability in merge times could be explained by characteristics of the PR itself, like the size of the PR, number of lines added, removed, or changed. So we concluded just based on the first pass of this that establishing an SLA for merging a PR based on our model was a fool's errand at this point. Um, okay, so overall, now what did we learn? Like in sum, we used a data-oriented approach to gauge the quality of our inner source collaboration process. We realize that metrics, while potentially important, paint only a small part of the bigger picture, not the whole story. A culture based on openness, inclusion, along with tools to empower engineers were the cornerstones of our successful inner source project. Uh, quality of documentation, the difficulty level of the problem being solved, the sensitivity or sensitive nature of the change, the availability of the reviewer team, quality of the requirements gathering and planning process, architecture and design and brainstorming meetings, CICD pipeline, to name a few are all crucial factors in a well-oiled contribution process. So these intangibles are difficult to measure, but they are each important pillars of a successful inner source project. In regard to the Keep It Generic and Get Stuff Done collaboration, we've made significant progress, but there is still a lot more work to be done. Um, and on that note, I'd like to thank you for listening uh, to our inner source journey. And uh, I invite you to check out our website at bloomberg.com engineering. We are hiring. Uh, thank you very much.